Hello, I'm John Potter. I'm Andy Guevara. Thank you for starting your day here with Channel 2 News this morning. We're going to start with a quick look at weather. Good morning to Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Good morning. Hi, Andy and John. Good morning. Happy Tuesday to you. It's going to be another beautiful day out there. Cold in the morning, nice in the afternoon, high of 58 degrees. We'll talk about that coming up and traffic in just a few minutes. Good morning. All right, well, Governor Sandoval and Nevada's incoming office holders met on the steps of the Capitol, taking their oaths of office. Now, the inauguration program was presented by students from Nevada schools. Sandoval was sworn in as Nevada's governor for the second time before giving his inaugural address. He says his main priority is improving education for Nevada's children. They are Nevada's generations to come. And I hereby dedicate all the work of my remaining years as your governor to their ultimate success. Five others also took their oaths of office, including Lieutenant Governor Mark Hutchinson, Secretary of State Barbara Sagoski, and Attorney General Adam Laxalt. And immediately after his inauguration, Governor Sandoval signed two executive orders. The first establishes Battleborn Hall, the old Senate chamber inside the state capitol, as a permanent home to the sesquicentennial exhibit. The second creates a business roundtable, which will bring people together from different industries who will be tasked with discussing ways to reform K-12 education. And a date for the first roundtable meeting has not been set yet. Well, more than 30 Washoe County officials were sworn in at commission chambers in Reno as well. Most notable in this group were the two men taking over positions in law enforcement, Chris Hicks as district attorney and Chuck Allen as Washoe County Sheriff. We're gonna really focus on aggressive prosecution. We're really gonna focus on professionalism. Um, and integrity. Those are the cornerstones of being a good prosecutor. We're going to build trust and respect and a rapport with the community. Uh, obviously, we're going to look uh, at, at crime stats. We're going to be hard on, on those who offend the law. You know, it's going to be tough not to call him Trooper Chuck. Mm -hmm. Is it just me? We're going to sit down with Sheriff Allen for an interview tonight at 5. There's more newly selected Court of Appeals judges took the oath of office at the Nevada Supreme Court in Carson City yesterday as well. Judges Jerome Tao. Michael Gibbons and Abby Silver. They will have a fast turnaround as tomorrow the court will get its first assignment of 167 cases and they'll begin reviewing them within the next 90 to 120 days. Mark Gibbons and Chris Pickering have officially taken their seats in the Nevada Supreme Court. Well, we have some new numbers in this morning and unfortunately 2014 saw a rise in traffic fatalities on Nevada roads. A reminder, we really need to drive safer out there. The Department of Public Safety and Transportation reporting that Nevada saw 284 deaths in crashes last year, an increase of 18 fatalities compared to 2013. They also noted a more than 200% jump in rural areas like Churchill, Story and Lander counties. To help improve things this year, crews are going to be installing more pedestrian crossing signals, stop signs, and other safety enhancements throughout the state. And in Safety Watch, the Nevada Department of Wildlife is urging all of us to take precautions to keep our property bear-proof. And this after an unusual number of bear sightings around the region for this time of year. Experts say the bears, of course, should be hibernating, but Endow says the drier weather in recent years has affected their sleep pattern. So officials are hoping this winter will bring a lot of snow so that those bears will be motivated to take that deep sleep. And Dow says a few tips to get bears out of your garbage and hopefully in turn out of your neighborhood. One, put out your garbage the morning of pickup, no sooner. Also, if you have fruit trees, make sure all the fruit is harvested. Pick up any fruit that falls to the ground. They'll go anywhere for food, you know, and they can climb trees and jump fences. We should be hibernating. That would be good. Uh, let's check forecast. Good morning, Jeff. Yeah, it sounds, sounds good yeah, to me, Jeff. I think so, too. <laughs> That's right. It's been so warm out. You know, 55 degrees today at uh, South Lake Tahoe. So, yeah, the bear is kind of wondering what's going on out there. Uh, but it's going to be another mild day today. Enjoy it while it lasts. After uh, last week's cold weather, we're uh, certainly going to be uh, enjoying the temperatures today. Tahoe Cam looking beautiful. No uh, clouds out there. We're looking good this morning. Clear skies, light winds. 
And uh, that's why we have uh, those valley inversions still set up pretty good with moderate air quality. Our traffic situation looking pretty good. Light traffic out there. No accidents to report all around town. Looking good. 25 for you in Lovelock. Hello, Eureka. You're at 27. About the same for Winnemucca. 28 at South Lake Tahoe. And uh, speaking of our air quality, uh, this is just updated. I just updated this. Our uh, air quality is now in the moderate range. A little bit better than yesterday. We were in the unhealthy category, so we've improved somewhat. But we still have that uh, red burn code in effect and likely will uh, continue right through this week with just no wind to mix things up. So red burn code. We have 29 degrees, your current temperature with light winds, and that'll likely remain the case throughout the day today. Average high is 45 degrees. We'll come close to 60 with 58 for the high today. Very nice. 720 your sunrise, your sunset now at 450. So not much change in our weather from yesterday. High pressure is still ke keeping us uh, nice and sunny out there. Hazy sunshine, we'll call it with uh, again some of that haze around the area. But uh, temperatures will start out in the 20s and in the upper 50s. So wide uh, spread in temperatures. Uh, very nice by this afternoon. We'll talk more about your weather, including the seven day forecast takes us through the weekend and beyond. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Back to you guys. OK, thanks. 506 our time Tuesday morning in Money Watch. Uh, many Americans are finding themselves in debt after the holidays. Oh, yeah. One of the biggest mistakes people make is not budgeting. When you pay off credit cards, experts say you should focus the payments on one card at a time. Get that one paid off. Take what you've been paying extra along with the minimum payment that you were paying. Take it all. Focus it on the next one. Get that one paid off. Take that plus what you were paying onto the third one, and it can really, 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 really add up. But so much easier said than done. If you consolidate your debt, they say to look for hidden fees. Consider how it could impact your credit score and just always pay on time, like mom said. And new this morning, the Lex nightclub here in Reno has been open for six months now. And representatives say due to the success of the club, they're actually looking to hire more employees. They say they're looking to fill between 15 and 20 spots. And to fill those positions, they're hosting a job fair tomorrow from 1 to 6 at the nightclub. If you're interested, they encourage you to swing by with your resume and they say dress to impress. For more information, you can head to KTVN.com. Click on that blue news links tab. You seen Andy dance there? Mm. Wow. <clears throat> Looking around the nation now, two New York City police officers were shot while on patrol in the Bronx last night, but their injuries are not believed to be life threatening. This happened while they were responding to a robbery call. The officers had just gotten on the scene and were not necessarily targeted by the gunman, unlike the two officers shot to death in their patrol car in Brooklyn two weeks ago. These two robbers responsible for the shooting are still at large. And it's back to work in Washington, D.C. The 114th Congress formally convened today. The new members will be sworn in and party leaders elected on a day that's steeped in tradition and ceremony. Landon Miller joins us live in the newsroom with a report. Good morning, Landon. Hey, Landon. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, John, I hear you back over there. Yeah, President Obama and Congress will have their sights set on overcoming their differences to hopefully bring some change this year. For the first time in eight years, Republicans are in control of both the House and the Senate. North Carolina Senator Tom Tillis is among 71 new members of Congress who will take the oath of office today. Regulatory reform is one of the single most important things we can do to get the economy back on track. Tennessee Representative Marsha Blackburn outlined some of the issues her party plans to tackle. Immigration, uh, health care, energy security. The enhanced Republican majority, the largest since the Great Depression, promises to immediately greenlight the long-stalled Keystone XL pipeline. Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell, who will take over as Senate Majority Leader, could try to move the bill to the floor as early as Thursday. But it's unclear if the president would veto it. Where Republicans don't agree, you're going to see the president take decisive action to, uh, to make progress uh, on his own where he can. Conservatives, though, still must tackle internal tensions, beginning with their defense of embattled House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. The Louisiana Republican came under fire last week. Following reports, he spoke at a white supremacist group back in 2002. Who they choose to serve in their leadership says a lot about who they are. Meanwhile, about a dozen Republicans plan to oppose John Boehner's reelection today as House Speaker, but he's expected to prevail.
Yeah, back here live in the newsroom, House and Senate Republicans are uh, planning a rare joint retreat in Hershey, Pennsylvania in mid-January to finalize their strategy for the new year. President Obama plans to uh, set his own agenda during his State of the Union address. It's a little bit later on this month and beginning tomorrow, the president will head out on a three city trip proposing new policies on home ownership, college education and jobs. Covering the story live from the newsroom, Landon Miller, Channel 2 News. Congress back in session. I feel so much better now. <laughs> Turning to our community this week, you can help those in need just by rolling up your sleeve. It starts tomorrow. The Atlantis Casino Resort Spa is hosting the 29th annual All Reno Radio Blood Drive tomorrow and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. in its Paradise Ballroom. This is the scene last year. All the blood goes to United Blood Services and DJs from every Reno radio station in town are going to be there to see if you're eligible to donate or to schedule an appointment online. Head to KTVN.com and click the blue news links uh, button. It only takes a few minutes. It yeah. saves lives. So consider doing it. Yeah, it's a radio blood drive, so you're not going to be able to get out of there without at least one. What's your favorite radio station? Yeah. Just to let you know. Yeah.